Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 31 of the course on statistics and probability. You will recall that in the last 15 lectures, we discussed basic probability theory. We started from the basic definitions of probability and we went on to discrete and continuous probability distributions. Also, we considered the bivariate situation and we considered the coefficient of correlation. Students, in today's lecture, we begin the third and last segment of this course and that is inferential statistics. That branch or that part of statistics which enables us to draw conclusions about real life phenomena on the basis of real data that we have collected on sample basis. Now, as you see on the slide, there are two branches of inferential statistics. Statistical inference can be divided into the two main areas of statistical inference are estimation and hypothesis testing. Estimation itself can be divided into two types, point estimation and interval estimation. I will be discussing with you first of all point estimation, then we will go on to interval estimation and after that we will discuss the other way of doing statistical inference and that is hypothesis testing. But students, before I talk about any of these, the most important point to be noted is that there is a concept called sampling distributions and this concept forms the basis for both estimation and hypothesis testing. So, in today's lecture and in the next lecture, we will be concentrating on this fundamental concept, that of sampling distributions. As you now see on the screen, the probability distribution of any statistic such as the mean, the standard deviation, the proportion of successes in a sample, this is known as its sampling distribution. Students, now let me explain this point to you in some detail. Many kaha, the probability distribution of any statistic is called its sampling distribution. Or aapko yaad hoga ke is course ke aagaz mein maine aapke saath ye loves share kiya tha. I said to you that there is a word called statistic, yani statistics nahi, just statistic. And what was that? Any quantity such as mean, median, standard deviation, any quantity that you compute from a sample that is called a statistic. Is waqt hum ye baat kar rahe hain ke wo tamam tar jo inferences humne draw karne hain, conclusions jo humne draw karne hain about the population they are going to be based on that sample, that one sample that we will draw from the population. So, this population uh, se jo sample we have drawn, now we have only this sample available. And with this sample data, we can do what we want to do. And we will be computing the mean or the proportion of successes, whatever success may be and um, median and so many other quantities whatever we are interested in from this one sample. Baat ye ho thi that the probability distribution of any statistic computed from the sample is called its sampling distribution. And students, I will explain this concept to you with reference to an example in uh, considerable detail taaki aapko kisi qism ki koi confusion baaki na rahe. As you now see on the slide, 
Let us examine the case of an annual Ministry of Transport test to which all cars irrespective of age have to be submitted. The test looks for faulty brakes, steering, lights and suspension and it is discovered after the first year that approximately the same number of cars have 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4 faults. Um, students, सबसे पहले इस सिचुएशन को समझने की कोशिश करें यानी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट ये टेस्ट कंडक्ट करती है उन उस मुल्क में ये लॉ है कि आपको कार्स जो हैं दे हैव टू बी टेस्टेड और ये चार चीजों के लिए टेस्ट करते हैं लेकिन उन्होंने देखा आफ्टर अबाउट अ ईयर कि जितनी कारें उन्होंने टेस्ट की नो फॉल्ट या वन फॉल्ट या टू या थ्री या फोर के चारों की चारों ही चीजें खराब हैं जो वो टेस्ट कर रहे हैं ये पांचों जो वैल्यूज हैं एक्स की where x represents the number of faults in the car, they found that these five values are equi-probable. Ye loves mein jo istamal kiya, us pe ghor ki jay. Statement jo abhi mein padhi, us mein to ye nahi tha. Us mein to ye tha na, ke they found that approximately the same number of cars have 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4 faults. Lekin mein isko is tarah se present kiya. कि उसी रिलेटिव फ्रीक्वेंसी डेफिनेशन ऑफ प्रोबेबिलिटी की रूस से जिस पे हम काफी डिस्कशन कर चुके हैं दैट वी कैन से दैट दिस फाइव वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स जीरो वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव दे आर इक्वल इक्वी प्रोबेबल एंड इफ यू अग्री विद दिस एक्सप्लेनेशन देन स्टूडेंट्स वी कैन टॉक अबाउट द प्रोबेबिलिटी सैंपल की बात तो बाद में होगी पहले वी टॉक अबाउट द प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ दोज मेनी मेनी कार्स दैट आर गोइंग टू अंडरगो दिस पर्टिकुलर टेस्ट सो एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन इज the column of X represents the number of faulty items in a car and this number goes from 0 to 4 and the probabilities are 1 by 5, 1 by 5, 1 by 5, 1 by 5 and 1 by 5. The reason being that as I just said these five values are equally probable. Now in order to find the mean and the standard deviation of this particular probability distribution, of course, we resort to the same method that we had before. We multiply the x column with the column of f of x, where f of x, of course, represents the probabilities. And multiplying the two and adding, we find that sigma x into f of x is equal to 2. Also, to find the variance of this distribution, we construct one more column and that is x square into f of x and the sum of that particular column comes out to be 30 over 5 and that is 6. Now, the mean of any discrete probability distribution is sigma x into f of x and therefore the mean is equal to 2 but the variance is given by e of x square minus e of x whole square as we have discussed earlier and hence the variance of this particular probability distribution comes out to be 6 minus 4 and that is 2. Taking the square root of this quantity the standard deviation of this particular probability distribution is equal to 1.414. Students, humne ye jo population hai na, iski distribution ke baare mein badi ahem baate or ahem points maaloom kar liye hai. We know that it is a distribution that is discrete because number of faults in a car can be one or two, lekin sawa do faults to nahi honge. And we know that the mean number of faults 
is 2 and we also know that the standard deviation of this distribution is 1.414. What about the shape of this distribution? Students, I hope that you have all answered my question spontaneously and said that it is a discrete uniform distribution. After all, aapko yaad nahi ki humne discrete uniform distribution pe substantial bas ki thi and we noted that whenever the probabilities are equal, we get a uniform distribution. Chaliye, population ke baare mein to ek clear idea humare zehen mein built ho gaya hai. What are we wanting to do, students? We are wanting to talk about all possible samples of a particular size that I can draw from this population. Why? Because, as I said earlier, ye jo inference hona hai, ye jo tamam tar uh, area hai of statistics, wo kya hai? To draw conclusions about this population that we have, on the basis of a sample. So, zahir hai ke jab hum ek real life research karenge, us vakht to hum sirf ek sample draw karenge. But, sampling distribution ka concept um, samajhne ke liye, we have to consider not just one, but all possible samples that you can draw from any particular population. Sampling can be done in two ways, sampling with replacement and sampling without replacement. Sampling with replacement kya hoti hai? You draw an element out of the population, you note down its um, main features and you replace it into the population. Or sampling without replacement kya hai? You draw an element out and you throw it away. Yani mera matlab hai ke you do not put it back into the population before drawing the next element. So, students, sampling distribution ka jo concept hai, um, we will be discussing this with reference to both sampling with replacement and sampling without replacement. Jeju mein aap se abhi pehle kaha, ke we have to consider now all possible samples that could be drawn from this population of any particular size ये बात भी आ, इस रेफरेंस से कि या तो वो तमाम तर सैंपल्स जो ड्रॉ किए जाएंगे दे विल बी विद रिप्लेसमेंट और या द दे विल ऑल दे विल ऑल बी विदाउट रिप्लेसमेंट सो इन दिस एग्जांपल दैट वी आर कंसीडरिंग लेट अस सपोज दैट द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट डिसाइड्स दैट दे विल जस्ट बी टेस्टिंग टू कार्स एट अ टाइम यानी सैंपल साइज जो है दैट इज टू ये मैंने इतना छोटा सैंपल इसलिए लिया है स्टूडेंट्स ताकि इस कॉन्सेप्ट को समझने में आपके लिए आसानी हो नाउ स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस सिनेरियो दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग वी आर एक्चुअली टॉकिंग अबाउट सैंपलिंग विद रिप्लेसमेंट और इस पॉइंट को मैं कुछ देर के बाद ज़्यादा तफसील से एक्सप्लेन करूँगी लेकिन फिलहाल आप ये नोट कीजिए that whenever you are drawing a sample of size small n from a population of size capital N, and if you are doing sampling with replacement, the total number of possible samples that can be drawn in this manner, that number is capital N raised to small n, as you now see on the screen. In this example, capital N can be regarded as 5, and small n, the sample size is 2. And um, 5 square, capital N raised to small n, gives us 25. The 25 possible situations are, as you now see on the slide, they are 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. Similarly, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3 and 1, 4. Or isi tarah chalte jaiye hatta ke hume aakhri uh, situation milti hai which is 4, 4. Achha, ab yahaan pe aap confuse honne ki yakinan koshish kar rahe hain. 
बिल्कुल ही कोई ज़रूरत नहीं है कन्फ्यूज होने की स्टूडेंट्स मैंने ये जो 25 सिचुएशंस आपके सामने प्रेजेंट की हैं ये वो हैं कि जब दो कार्स को आप स्टॉप करें बाय द रोड साइड एट रैंडम और उनको टेस्ट कर लें फॉर दीज फोर थिंग्स फॉल्टी लाइट्स सस्पेंशन एंड द अदर टू दैट आई मैंशन डर तो अब ये 25 मुमकिन सिचुएशंस हैं ज़ीरो ज़ीरो का क्या मतलब है कि वो जो पहली कार है उसमें भी देर इज़ नो फॉल्ट और जो दूसरी कार है उसमें भी नो फॉल्ट एंड वॉट इज़ वन थ्री वन थ्री का मतलब हुआ कि जो पहली कार रोकी गई दैट हैज़ वन फॉल्ट आउट ऑफ दोज फोर थिंग्स एंड द सेकेंड कार दैट यू स्टॉप दैट हैज़ थ्री फॉल्ट तो इस तरह आई एम श्योर यू विल अग्री नाओ दैट दीज आर द ट्वेंटी फाइव पॉसिबल सिचुएशन लास्ट सिचुएशन मैंने अर्ज किया कि फोर फोर है यानी दोनों की दोनों कारें जो हैं उनमें चारों की चारों चीज़ें ख़राब हैं नाओ एज आई जस्ट सेड अ शॉर्ट वाइल गो के एन रेस टू एन कैपिटल एन रेस टू स्मॉल एन ये नंबर ऑफ सैम्पल्स होता है वेन वी आर सैम्पलिंग विद रिप्लेसमेंट यहाँ पे ये आप कहेंगे कि वट डू यू मीन आप एक कार को निकाल के तो फिर से कार को वापस डाल तो नहीं रहे ना येस यू आर राइट देयर स्टूडेंट्स लेकिन आप इस पॉइंट को इस तरह से अंडरस्टैंड कीजिए कि अगर हमारे पास एक हैट है और हमने पांच पर्चियों पे ये पांच नंबर अलग अलग लिख दिए जीरो वन टू थ्री एंड फोर और उन पर्चियों को फोल्ड करके उस हैट में डाल दिया एंड देन वी शफल और शेक द हैट एंड वी ड्रॉ फर्स्ट वी ड्रॉ वन ऑफ दो स्लिप्स एंड सपोज इट सेज जीरो हमने उसको वापस डाल दिया एंड देन आई अगेन शेक इट एंड देन आई ड्रॉ एन अदर वन एंड वंस अगेन इट इज जीरो स्टूडेंट्स चूंकि ये विद रिप्लेसमेंट है ना कि मैंने वापस डाल दिया था इसीलिए ये पॉसिबल हुआ कि दूसरी मरतबा भी I could get a zero, and therefore I get the pair zero zero. देखा आपने This is the way to understand the point. कि अगर आप without replacement करते तब तो आप zero zero um, आप आपको नहीं मिल सकता था अगर पहली मरतबा में zero निकल आया and you have thrown it out of that hat, तो अब तो उस hat के अंदर सिर्फ चार पर्चियाँ बाकी हैं वन टू थ्री फोर तो अब तो नेक्स्ट टाइम यू कैन आई द ग्रेट वन और अ टू और अ थ्री और अ फोर नाउ वॉट इज द टोटल नंबर ऑफ पॉसिबल सैम्पल्स दैट कैन बी ड्रॉन विदाउट रिप्लेसमेंट फ्राम अ पॉपुलेशन स्टूडेंट्स द आंसर इज कैपिटल एन सी स्मॉल एन आपको याद नहीं वेन वी वर डिस्कसिंग द रूल्स ऑफ परमोटेशन एंड कॉम्बिनेशन उस वक्त कॉम्बिनेशन रूल के की डिस्कशन के हवाले से मैंने आपसे यही कहा था ना दैट इफ़ यू वॉन्ट टू ड्रॉ आर थिंग्स आउट ऑफ एन थिंग्स विदाउट रिप्लेसमेंट वहाँ अगर ये लफ्ज़ नहीं भी कहा स्टूडेंट्स तो इट वॉज इम्प्लाइड क्योंकि आम जिंदगी में जब आप निकालते हैं ना तो आप विदाउट रिप्लेसमेंट ही निकालते हैं आप दस स्टूडेंट्स बैठे हैं क्लास में उनमें से दो स्टूडेंट्स को लेकर जाना है हमने सेमिनार पे तो हम यूँ तो नहीं करेंगे ना कि एक निकाला वापस डाला और दोबारा भी वही निकाल लिया सो इन रियल लाइफ ऑफ कोर्स मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम वी आर डीलिंग विद सिचुएशंस व्हेन वी आर सैम्पलिंग विदाउट रिप्लेसमेंट तो उस वक्त जब कॉम्बिनेशन रूल की बात कही तो यही आपसे कहा के द टोटल नंबर ऑफ वेज ऑफ ड्राइंग आर थिंग्स आउट ऑफ एन थिंग्स इज एन सी आर एग्जैक्टली यही फॉर्मूला आप यहाँ पे अप्लाई कीजिए द पॉपुलेशन साइज इज कैपिटल एन एंड सैम्पल साइज इज स्मॉल एन एंड द टोटल नंबर ऑफ वेज ऑफ ड्राइंग सैम्पल्स विदाउट रिप्लेसमेंट ऑफ साइज स्मॉल एन फ्राम दिस पॉपुलेशन ऑफ साइज कैपिटल एन दैट नंबर इज एन सी एन and as you now see on the slide in this example ncn is equal to 5c2 
and 5 C 2 is equal to 5 factorial over 2 factorial into 3 factorial and that is equal to 10. So, if the population values are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, then the 10 possible samples of size 2 drawn without replacement from this population are 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2, 4 and 3, 4. Students, aapne ghor kiya ki ye jo das samples hain, in me first element jo hai that is not repeated. Kaume se pehle jo element hai, kaume ke baad usse mukhtalif element hai and this is what you will obtain when you, whenever you are sampling without replacement. Lekin is waqt hum wapis usi example pe chalte hain, jo ministry of transport wala hai, jis mein they are just uh, stopping two cars at random by the roadside and they are testing them. Yaha pe students sampling with replacement wala case valid hai, kyunke wo kare jo hain, they are independent or mumkin hai ke pehli car mein bhi zero hi faults ho aur dousri jo roki jaye, us mein bhi zero hi faults ho and so you get zero zero as one possible situation. So, as I said a few minutes earlier, in this kind of a scenario, the total number of possible samples is n raised to n, 5 raised to 2 and that is 25. And once again, if you see on the screen, the 25 samples are 0, 0, 0, 1 and so on, going up to 4, 3 and 4, 4. Ye jo Ministry of Transport hai, iska aim kya hai? ये इस वक्त हम ये अस्यूम कर रहे हैं कि हम ये जानना चाहते हैं या मिनिस्ट्री ये जानना चाहती है कि what is the average number of faults per car in this particular city यानी gist of the whole story कि हम mu में interested हैं mu of course represents the mean of the population अब ये जो samples of size 2 हम draw कर रहे हैं इनसे तो हमें mu नहीं मिल सकता ना in me se to kisi bhi sample ka agar aap mean compute karenge to that will be x bar to baat hi yahi hai ke x bar jo hai that will be an estimate of mu aur ye jo sari discussion mein is waqt kar rahi hu aur aage agle lectures mein bhi hogi that is uh, in this area x bar jo hame sample se milega jo mu ki estimation karega इस सिलसिले में कुछ इंतहाई अहम मैथमेटिकल पॉइंट्स जिनके अंडर सैम्पलिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन का बहुत ज़्यादा इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट भी आता है ये सब कुछ हम डिस्कस इस वक्त कर रहे हैं ऑल राइट वी हैव ट्वेंटी फाइव सैम्पल्स एंड वी आर इंटरेस्टेड इन द मीन सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट एस कम्प्यूट द मीन ऑफ ईच वन ऑफ दीज ट्वेंटी फाइव पॉसिबल सैम्पल्स um, itna chota sample size hai, sirf do values hai, you just have to add the two and divide by two. And as you now see on the screen, the 25 sample means are 0 0.0, 0 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0 and so on. And the mean of the last possible sample is 4 plus 4 divided by 2 and that is 4.0. Aapne note kiya ke in means mein se kuch means zyada martaba akar kar rahi hain aur kuch kam martaba. So naturally zahen mein ye baat aati hai ke agar hum in mean values ki frequency distribution form kar lehen to we will have a better idea of the situation. So we would like to do exactly that and as you now see on the slide, the frequency distribution of x bar in this particular example is the column of x bar starts from 0, 0.0 and goes up to 4.0 and the number of samples having these values of x bar are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1 so that 
the sum of the column of frequencies is 25 and this is exactly the number of samples that we had. Dividing these frequencies by the total frequency 25 students we obtain 1 by 25, 2 by 25, 3 by 25 and so on and these numbers represent the probabilities of the various values of x bar. The probability that x bar will be equal to 0 is 1 over 25, the probability that x bar will be 0 0.5 is 2 by 25 and so on. Students, ye baat ke ye jo humne divide karke number nikale, they represent the probabilities. Agar aapko isme kuch thodi si confusion hai, to aap usi purani baat pe jaiye ke agar um, sare item equally likely ho, then the classical definition is valid. Or yaha pe in reality, ye probabilities jo hain, they are occurring due to the classical definition. Ye jo samples, all possible samples hai na, um, they are equally likely to be drawn. In me se koi bhi sample um, aa sakta hai in a real life situation or equal chance hai. Is liye equally likely ki condition puri hoti hai and we can apply the formula favorable over the total. And so, jab hum dekhte hai ki 25 me se sirf ek sample hai jiska mean 0.0 ho sakta hai. To iska matlab hai ki only one of those 25 is favorable to what we want here and so the probability that x bar will be equal to 0, 0.0 comes out to be 1 by 25 and in a similar way you can interpret all those probabilities. Students, this particular probability distribution that we have just constructed, this is called the sampling distribution of x bar. Yani, a uh, simple concept, a column of x bar along with a column of probabilities such that the sum of the probabilities column is 1. Yani, bilkul wohi purana concept or is liye jo hamari sab se pehli definition thi, that is fulfilled. The probability distribution of any statistic is called its sampling distribution. अगर हम um, x bar की जगह x tilde यानी median की बात कर रहे होते और ये जो 25 sample हैं इन सब के medians compute करते और बिल्कुल इसी procedure के जरिए जो मुख्तलिफ values हैं median की उनकी probabilities compute कर लेते तो students that would have been called the sampling distribution of x tilde. So I hope that you have no confusion whatsoever. The sampling distribution is a fundamental concept for statistical inference. Estimation or hypothesis testing dono mein iska kalidi kirdar hai aur ye cheez hum discuss karenge as we go on. At this point in time, I would like you to think of the shape of this particular distribution and also its center and its spread. After all, aapko pata to hai, har vakt hume in teen cheezo mein interest hota hai. The center or the location of our distribution on the x-axis, the spread which is a measure of variability or variability wo cheez hai jo Allah Taala ne is kainat mein har taraf rakhi hui hai. After all, what is statistics? Students, statistics is the science of dealing with variability. Shape mein hum bada interested rehte hain. Is it symmetric? Is it skewed? Let us look at the shape of this particular distribution. As you now see on the screen, if we plot x bar along the x axis, and the probabilities along the y-axis, we obtain the vertical line segments which yield an absolutely symmetric triangular distribution. Now, aapne dekha ke 
बिल्कुल ही सिमेट्रिक है और ट्रायंगुलर है वॉट विल बी द मीन ऑफ दिस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आप आई थिंक यू विल अग्री दैट आई डोंट हैव टू अप्लाई एनी फॉर्मूला आई जस्ट सिंपली लोकेट द सेंटर ऑफ दिस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट वी हैव ऑन द स्लाइड एंड वी फाइंड दैट द मीन इज इक्वल टू टू बट देन वॉट अबाउट द स्प्रेड उसके लिए अब थोड़ा सा प्रॉब्लम है स्प्रेड के लिए तो शायद हमें एक्चुअल फार्मूला कंप्यूट करना ही पड़े सो वॉट इज द फार्मूला बाई विच वी कैन कंप्यूट द स्प्रेड द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन और इवन द मीन ऑफ अ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ दिस टाइप एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्लाइड students we have already learnt that in the case of the probability distribution of x mu is given by sigma x into f of x and the variance is given by sigma square equal to e of x square minus e of x whole square which is further equal to sigma x square into f of x minus sigma x into f of x whole square but now since we are dealing with the probability distribution of x bar therefore we replace x by x bar in these formulas and hence we obtain mu x bar that is the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar is equal to expected value of x bar which is equal to sigma x bar into f of x bar similarly sigma square x bar that is the variance of the sampling distribution of x bar is equal to expected value of x bar square minus expected value of of x bar whole square and this is further equal to sigma x bar square into f of x bar minus sigma x bar into f of x bar whole square students aapne dekha ke ye bahut aasan hai qatai mushkil nahi hai all you have to do is to replace x by x bar pehle aapka x aur f of x ka column hota tha अब आपके पास x बार और f ऑफ x बार का कॉलम एंड देर फोर यू जस्ट रिप्लेस x बाई एक्स बार नाउ लेट इज ट्राई टू फाइंड द मीन एंड द वेरियंस ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर सैम्पलिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन वेन आई मल्टीप्लाई द x बार कॉलम बाय द कॉलम ऑफ f ऑफ x बार व्हिच रिप्रेजेंट्स द प्रोबेबिलिटीज ऑफ द वेरियस वैल्यूज of x bar i obtain x bar into f of x bar is equal to 0 1 by 25 3 by 25 6 by 25 and so on and upon adding this particular column the expected value of x bar comes out to be 50 over 25 and that is equal to 2 similarly in order to find the variance i first need to find expected value of x bar square and that is equal to the sum of the column x bar square into f of x bar therefore i multiply the first column that of x bar by the third column that is x bar into f of x bar to obtain the fourth column which is x bar square into f of x bar and the values in this particular column are 0 1 by 50 6 by 50 18 by 50 and so on adding these values the expected value of x bar square comes out to be 250 over 50 and that is equal to 5 now substituting these values in the formula of the variance i obtain 
the variance of x bar is equal to 5 minus 2 square and that is equal to 1. When I take the square root of this particular quantity, it is obvious that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar is also equal to 1. Students, ab mein aapko do ya teen bohat hi ahem points batane wali hu. The first thing is that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar is called the standard error of x bar. Or ye jo term hai na, standard error. This is um, widely known worldwide and it is a very, very important term. Standard deviation to hai hamare distribution ki, usko hum kehte hai standard error. Ab yakinan aapke zehen mein sawaal aara hoga ki error ka lafz kahan se aagya. To aisa karte hai ki is particular sawaal ko thoda sa pending kar dete hai and I will pick it up later. Now the other very important point that I would like to convey to you is that there are certain relationships between the mean of the sampling distribution and the mean of the population and between the standard deviation of the sampling distribution and the standard deviation of the population. As you now see on the slide, the first property is that mu x bar is equal to mu. Is me on the left hand side we have mu x bar which represents the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar and as you noticed a short while ago in this example mu x bar is equal to 2. Now in this equation on the right hand side we have mu or jab hum khali mu kehte hain we are talking about the mean of the population. Aur aapko yaad hoga uh, is problem ke aghaz mein humne population ka mean compute kiya tha and that also was equal to 2. Hence this equation is verified that mu x bar is equal to mu. Students, ye jo formula mene abhi aapko diya, this is valid in the case of sampling with replacement and also in the case of sampling without replacement. Agar aap sampling with replacement karein, to 25 sample bane, 25 means aapne compute ki, x bar ki 25 values thi, aur humne dekha ke mu x bar, the mean of the means, yani meano ki mean, that is equal to the population mean. Agar hum sampling without replacement karte, to 5C2, yani sirf 10 sample hote, or sirf 10 adad sample means hoti, but you would have found that the mean of those 10 means would also have been equal to 2. Now, the other extremely important relationship is between the standard deviation or the standard error of the sampling distribution of x bar and the standard deviation of the population. And as you now see on the slide, in case of sampling with replacement, sigma x bar is equal to sigma over square root of n. On the other hand, in case of sampling without replacement from a finite population of size capital N, sigma x bar is equal to sigma over square root of n and this whole term is multiplied by the square root of capital N minus small n over capital N minus 1. The factor square root of capital N minus n over n minus 1 can be referred to as the finite population correction factor and it is abbreviated to be called FPC. Alright, ab to kuch bohat hi complicated situation ho gai hai, hai na? Itna confuse honne ki to zarurat hi nahi hai. Jaisa ke bohat dafa aap se keh chuki hoon, just relax and 
approach the problem in a methodical manner. Hamari equation with replacement ke case me kya thi? Sigma x bar is equal to sigma over square root of n. Or is problem me aapko yaad hoga ke aagaz me humne jo population hamari thi uska standard deviation nikal liya tha. And I hope you do remember it was the square root of 2 and it was 1.5. 414. Ab sample size kya hai? 2. Lehaza ye jo equation hai iski right hand side kya hai? Sigma over square root of n. Dusre lafzo mein 1.414 over square root of 2. Yani 1.414 over 1.414 and that is equal to 1. But what is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution students? Abhi chand minute pehle humne dekha ke sigma x bar is equal to 1. So, this equation is verified. 1 is equal to 1 and therefore, we have verified for this example, this very important relation. Ab jo hum ek swakt example kar rahe hain. Usme to without replacement nahi kiya kar rahe, ye to equivalent hai us situation ke when we are sampling with replacement. Lekin agar aap kisi or example mein sampling without replacement kare, then you will find that sigma x bar will be equal to sigma over square root of n multiplied by the square root of capital N minus small n over capital N minus 1, yani the FPC. Students, ye jo term hai capital N minus small n over capital N minus 1, jaysa ke maine do teen baar kaha, this is required whenever we are sampling without replacement from a finite population. Magar, ek point bhoat important yaha pe bhi aap note ki jay. If the sample size is much, much smaller than the population size, for example, if capital N is 1000, and sample size small n is only 2. Is situation mein ye jo term hai ye kis cheez ke barabar hogi? Capital N minus small n over capital N minus 1 is equal to 1000 minus 2 over 1000 minus 1. Yani uh, 998 divided by 999. And students you will all agree that this is equal to 0.99 something and that is approximately equal to 1. So, this means that whenever the population size is much larger than the sample size, this term is almost equal to 1 and we do not need to apply it. Because once you multiply it, it means that you don't write it. So, in this sense, as a rule of thumb, you keep this in your mind. Ke if the sample size is less than 5% of the population size, then you don't need to apply this term. But if the sample size is greater than 5% of the population size, then you should attach this term to the other part, sigma over square root of n. All right, what are we wanting to discuss in this lecture? We are talking about the sampling distribution of x bar. Abhi humne sample size 2 ke liye dekha ke humari sampling distribution triangular hai. Uska mean bilkul middle mein hai obviously. Aur uska standard error jo hai. Uski bhi ek relationship hai with the population standard deviation. Mean ki to nahayat interesting relationship hai. Jaysa mene pehle kaha ke sample means ka mean population mean ke barabar hota hai. Students, jo property mein aap ke saath ab discuss karne wali hoon, that is of crucial importance in statistical theory. Aur wo ye hai ke what happens to the shape of our sampling distribution if the sample size is increased Abhi jo example tha, usme to it was an extremely small sample size. It was only 2. Aayye, dekhte hain ke humari sampling distribution ki shape uh, kis tarah se transform hoti hai 
as we increase the sample size. Suppose that the Ministry of Transport decides to test at any particular occasion, not just two cars, but three cars. Dusre lavzo mein, ab hamara sample size three hai. And according to the formula that I presented earlier, uh, the total number of samples of size three that can be drawn with replacement from a population of size five is equal to capital N raised to small n, that is five raised to three, and that is 125. Students, agar in 125 samples ke liye, har sample ka aap mean compute kare, or frequency distribution banaye, or probabilities nikaal ne, exactly the same way as we did earlier, then you obtain the sampling distribution of x bar that we now have on the screen. This time, the values of x bar are 0.00, 0 0.33, 0 0.67, 1 1.00, and so on. And the frequencies are 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 18, 19, 18, 15, 10, 6, 3, and 1. Dividing each of these numbers by 125, we obtain the probabilities. And when we plot these on a graph paper, we find that even now our distribution is absolutely symmetrical, but it is very important to note that unlike the earlier one, which was triangular, this particular distribution is more like a normal distribution. Students, I would like to encourage you to work on this problem on your own. Yani, aap size 5 ki jo population hai na, um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Usme se aap all possible samples of size 3 khuds nikaliye with replacement. To kya aenge samples? The first possible sample will be 0, 0, 0. Yani, un karon ke hawale se hum yu samjhe, कि वो तीनों कारें जो स्टॉप की गईं बाय द रोड साइड उनमें से किसी भी कार में कोई एक फॉल्ट भी नहीं पाया गया एंड द सेकंड पॉसिबल सैंपल विल बी 0 0 1 यानी पहली दो कारें तो सही निकली बट इन द थर्ड वन देयर वाज वन फॉल्ट एंड स्टूडेंट्स यू हैव टू गो वेरी सिस्टमेटिकली क्योंकि अगर आप सिस्टमेटिकली नहीं चलेंगे तो देयर इज अ प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट यू माइट गेट अ बिट कंफ्यूज्ड so I would like to help you a little, 000, 001, 002, 003, 004. Ab iske baad kya Should we talk about 010, 011, 012, 013 and 014? Yes, I think we are going in the right direction. Aap isko zaroor ek martaba khud kijiye. It will take quite a bit of time, but I assure you, if you go through this exercise once, you will acquire a sense of confidence and you will feel at home with this idea. How do we obtain the various X bar values that you just saw on the screen? The first one was 0 0.00. It's obvious. It's the first sample. Hai na? 0, 0, 0. Zahir hai ki agar aap in teen values ko add kare aur 3 se divide kare, you will get a 0. But what about the second one? Um, we have 0, 0, 1. Aur agar iska in values ka mean lena chahe to kya aega? 0 plus 0 plus 1 over 3. And how much is that? 1 by 3? And that is 0 0.33. And that is exactly the value we had on the screen as the second possible value of x bar. All right. Now that we have looked at the distribution of uh, x bar for the case sample size equal to 3, let us also consider the sampling distribution for that case when sample size is equal to 4. Yani, eight number or add kar lije. Is case mein, how many possible samples? 
n raised to n, 5 raised to 4, and how much is that, students? That is 625. So, if you want to draw uh, samples of size 4 with replacement from a population of size 5, you have as many as 625 possible samples. Ab mein aap se ye nahi kahungi ke aap isko khud kare because I know that now you will say that it's too much. 625 samples, the first of which is 0, 0, 0, 0. And the last one is also very simple, 4, 4, 4, and 4. Lekin jo 623 darmyan mein hai, that is a long story. But if you don't want to do it yourself, then please accept what I am conveying to you. As you now see on the slide, in this situation, we have a sampling distribution of x bar as follows. The values of x bar are 0 0.00, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1.00 and so on. And the probabilities are such that when we plot this particular distribution, it is again absolutely symmetrical. As you now see on the slide, students, this particular one looks like a normal distribution, even more than the one which we had in the case of sample size equal to 3. And this is exactly the point that leads us to one of the most important theorems in statistical theory. As you now see on the screen, the theorem known as the central limit theorem states that if a variable x from a population has mean mu and finite variance sigma square, then the sampling distribution of x bar approaches a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma over square root of n as the sample size n approaches infinity. Now, you have noticed that according to the central limit theorem, agar sample size infinity ko tend kar jaye, to hamari sampling distribution normal ko approach karti hai. Aur abhi jo example mene aapke saamne pesh kiya, us mein aapne dekha ke infinity to bohat dur ki baat hai, abhi sirf humne size 2, size 3 aur size 4 ko consider kiya aur size 4 pe we saw that the distribution looked much more like a normal than what we had in the case of size 2. Now as you see on the slide, as n tends to infinity, the sampling distribution of x bar approaches normality with mean equal to mu and standard deviation equal to sigma over square root of n. students. This is a theorem of fundamental importance. Aksar aukat, hum keh sakte hain ke humari jo population hai, that will be something like a normal. Kyunke agar, for example, aap heights ki baat kar rahe hain, ya temperature, ya is kusam ke phenomena, blood pressure vagaira ki baat kar rahe hain, to jaisa ke mene pehle discuss kiya tha, um, most of these phenomena are normally distributed. So, in that case, mein toh, is theorem ki as such zarurat hi nahi hai. Lekin, zahir hai ki kai aisi situations hongi where we cannot say that the population is normal or us case mein hum kaise malum kare ki humari jo sampling distribution hongi uski kya shape hongi. This theorem comes to our rescue. We note that irrespective of the shape of the population, as long as the sample size small n is adequately large, the sampling distribution of x bar is going to be approximately normal with mean mu and standard deviation sigma over square root of n. And what happens in the case when the population itself is normal? Then we are better off. Phir to ye hai ke ye shart lagane ki bhi zarurat nahi rehti ke sample size large ho. Us case mein 
as you now see on the slide, we have the situation that if the population sampled is normally distributed, then the sampling distribution of x bar will also be normally distributed regardless of the sample size. In other words, x bar will be normal with mean mu and standard deviation sigma over square root of n even if sample size n is not very large. Students, in today's lecture, I discussed with you the fundamentally important concept of sampling distributions. We will be discussing this topic further in the next lecture. And in the meantime, I would like to encourage you to study various aspects of this concept in your textbook and in as many other books as you conveniently can. Until next time, best of luck and Allah Hafiz.